Welcome back for another video. It's the calm before the storm this week. We've got doubles around the corner, and in this one we're going to catch up with what the experts are doing this week, including their most popular transfers in and out, the experts team and captaincy. If you're new around here, make sure you're subscribing to benefit from this series for the run-in. We'll kick off with the manager highlight, and it's a big one this week. FPL Flair is the first expert to move into the top 100 in the world, with a score of 77 points last game week, taking him up to 78th overall. Absolutely insane to score 77 points and be ranked 78th. Absolutely top manager, having finished top 10k the last two seasons as well. Can he close the 70 point gap on first place with his wildcard and bench boost remaining, or is the gap too much? Well done if you managed to beat the experts average score which was 65 points. This week just 13% are rolling, 48% have made one transfer and 36% have made two. Three managers have made three transfers for a minus four hit. This week, Chip's strategy is playing a big part in transfer activity. 57% have used their free hit, so the 43% still with theirs are largely going to be looking to use it in Gemic 34, and this week they need to spend their transfers or lose it, and they're going to be looking at Gemic 37 rather than 34. As a reminder, you can't roll two transfers into a free hit either, so some are bringing in players this week that will be intended to use in double Gemic 37. We've just had double Gemic 37 announced this week, which means the rest of the season is now locked in, so let's have a look at the three double game weeks remaining now we know the exact schedule. Next week will be double game week 34, seven teams will double, Arsenal and Liverpool notably. From Arsenal, Raya, Gabriel, Saliba, White, Erdegaard, Saka and Havertz all solid options. From Liverpool it's Van Dijk, Salah, Diaz and Darwin. Trent, Jota and Alisson are all back in training but riskier picks. Palace have got two home games in there so against West Ham and Newcastle. Eze and Mateta are the two standouts. Elise and Henderson reasonable picks as well. Pickford, Mikalenko, Bramfway are solid options from Everton. And from Wolves, it's mainly Sarabia, Cunha, and Huang if he's fully fit. Double Gaming 35 will be Chelsea and Spurs. Lots plan to wildcard this week directly into the double with triple Chelsea and Spurs. Beyond Palmer, it's pretty slim pickings for Chelsea though. Petrovic and Gusto will probably be the popular second or third picks. From Spurs, it's obviously Sun, and then it'll be Madison, Richarlison, Idogi, Porro, and Vicario. And then in game week 37, in the second to last game week, it'll be Brighton, Chelsea, Man City, Man United, Newcastle and Spurs that double. So Chelsea and Spurs will double in 35 and 37. We'll move on to the most transferred players now, as some experts are already picking up players to build towards that week. The most transferred in player this week is Luis Diaz, 14% have bought him before Palace at home. A shock result Thursday night, as Liverpool were beaten by Atalanta and Anfield 3-0. Diaz and Salah were both named on the bench for that one, both came on at half time but couldn't have an impact. The question is, who does Jota impact coming back from injury? He also came off the bench that match. I sifted through all of Jota's 13 starts this season. On four occasions he started over Darwin, and on four occasions he started over Diaz. In the other five he started but when either Darwin or Salah weren't in the squad. So the answer is either Darwin or Diaz could be impacted. Klopp's used Diaz, Jota and Salah as much as he's used Jota, Darwin and Salah as the front three. 5% have sold Darwin, but those are mostly going to be managers free hitting in Gemic 34 anyway, and they've got the choice to pick him up next week if they want. 6% have bought Jao Pedro with a longer term view towards Brighton's double Gemic 37. So the answer to Diaz or Darwin really boils down to whichever makes more sense in your team. If you've got a more replaceable midfielder than Diaz, and vice versa for Darwin. Sun is actually the most sold player, 16% have sold him. Beyond Diaz, some other popular midfielders they're buying are Gordon, Sarabia, Eze and Havertz. No one's got more points than Havertz since Gemic 25, he's got 5 goals and 5 assists in his last 7 games. The second top transfer is Dan Byrne, who looks pretty much nailed for the run-in, but the question is at what cost? Lascelles and Botman won't play this season, so he's an option for Howe in centre-back, but also in left-back in Livermento's absence who's due back next month. Paul hasn't trained this week and he's a doubt for Gemic 33. Given how bare bones Newcastle's defence is right now, it's quite surprising that the most sold player is Sun. Some are likely in the position of having two free transfers, and nowhere obvious to spend it, so they're looking to buy Diaz out of the double game week. 8% have sold Saka, who could have his minutes heavily managed, with Arsenal tied 2 all in aggregate with Bayern Munich, and they play the second leg away next week. Saka played the full 90 on Tuesday in the first leg. Of course, the elephant in the room is that early team news could force some last minute transfers. For example, if Haaland doesn't start, then Darwin's going to be a popular transfer for those that are not free hitting in Gemic 34. Or otherwise, Isaac, Jao Pedro, etc., for the free hitters. We'll be covering all the early lineup news on the deadline stream as always, so make sure you subscribe for that. Let's move on to Gemic 33 captaincy. Just two names this week, which you can probably guess Harland and Salah. 
78% are back in Haaland, 22% are Captain Salah. We know what happened last time City played Luton. They put six past them, including five goals from Haaland, four assisted by De Bruyne. That was played at Kenilworth Road as well. Pep's in a luxury position here, having a favourable fixture sandwiched right between two Champions League games. Expecting a lot of rotation here, and the big question is, does Haaland start? On the one hand, he's looked off his best lately, and if he can bag a couple of goals in a 60 minute cameo, that would do his confidence a world of good before the second leg, but Alvarez up top can quite easily get them over the line and rest Haaland. Someone who likely won't be starting this week is Foden, who was brought up with a knock in the Real Madrid tie earlier in the week. So as we said, Salah didn't start in Europa League, 45 minutes under his belt, and Liverpool need a reaction at Anfield after the 3-0 loss. FPU review projections has got them neck and neck this week. I've given Haaland an estimated 75 minutes which puts him on 7.6 points and Salah 7.5. Tony's in third, who I've included in the screenshot as a left field shout if Haaland doesn't start. Home to Sheffield United and he was on the bench last match just as a precaution, so he should be in line for a start this week. He's got Luton in game week 34 as well. The anytime goal scorer odds have got Haaland top with a 56.5% chance to score him and then Tony, Darwin and Salah all tied on 47%. So Salah or Haaland or someone else, let us know in the comments who your captain is. Moving on to the experts team for Gameweek 34, which is built from the highest end players across all their teams for a template team. It's Neto in goal, in defence Gabriel, Aitnori and Gusto, Salah, Palmer, Sun and Saka in midfield, Haaland, Solanke and Darwin up top, and on the bench Ariola, Garnacho, Udogi and Zabane. Just 7 in the starting 11 double in Gameweek 34, plus Zabane on the bench, which is obviously a consequence of 43% still having their free here. Those managers don't need to think about buying Gemi 34 doublers. Palmer and Salah are both 98% owned among the experts, the two highest owned players, and then Haaland, Gabriel, Saka, Sun and Solanke. Ariola missed West Ham's Europa League tie with Leverkusen once again, Fabianski started in goal. He's still 46% owned, though too much of a luxury transfer to sell in most teams. Garnacho joins the team this week, and his ownership will no doubt only rise between now and Gemi 37. He rose last night to 5 mil, which is still dirt cheap. On next week's video, we'll have a huge amount of free hits active, so make sure you subscribe for that, so you don't miss the free hit special. On to experts tips and final thoughts for Gameweek 33, here's what they had to say this week. Dave says, plans might change depending on leagues, but I'm now fairly committed to no Foden for the run-in. Terrifies me, but really think having a low-owned Saka and Salah could be a ridiculous differential. Andrew Debenham says, with double Gameweek on the horizon, Using all of the available information and making the right transfers is more important than ever. It is the time of the season to ignore price changes and make those transfers late, late, late. Matt Brooks is considering a different chip strategy. He says, I'm exploring the options around a bench boost 34 before a wildcard 35 rather than bench boost 37. I'm thinking it means I'm more likely to feel better about keeping players from Arsenal and Liverpool who don't double in 37. We'll probably end up being a late call though and would likely require one or more hits, which I don't like at this point of the season. Tom Tom's got the same train of thought, and he says, Mateta's in head of double game week 34 when I'll bench boost. 13 doublers plus Haaland and Palmer seems better than the 37 to me. Epil Addict says, getting towards the business end of the season. Whilst I'd never advocate taking risks for the sake of it, I'm always more open to punts and a low effective ownership, and or taking hits in the final few game weeks of the season. I'll steer clear of any early transfers to catch price changes though as these are unlikely to add much value this deep in the campaign, especially with Europe impacting player rotation. Best of luck all. FPL Poker Player says, with the free hit and wildcard coming over the next two game weeks following this one, it's time for a one-week pun. Assuming Bowen's out, he'll make way for the big differential that's Brian and Bumo, who managed 85 minutes and a goal at the weekend. This kind of transfer is why we play FPL. And lastly, Forza Inter says, as some of your more dedicated, more ghoulish viewers may recount, my wife dropping a chef's knife in my dominant hand convinced me to keep KDB last week so he could earn his way back into my good graces. It worked. Green arrow achieved. And so I've kindly asked my wife to forego dropping another knife on me this week and to just instead tell me who not to sell. Her exact words are as follows. Whatever you do, don't sell Harlan. Trust the Norwegian meat shield. He's hungry. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be live right here two hours before the deadline in the morning. See you all then.